Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of the Treehouse Podcast. And for anyone who's just tuning in, uh, my name is Martin and my co-host across is Josie. And today we have a very special guest with us. Um, he's been a mainstay in the scene, on and off the stage. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, we're going to get to join us and we're, we'll be picking his brain tonight. We have Mr. Joey Deason, everybody on the pod. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Thanks, Raph. Hey, Thanks man. for being here, man. Thanks for being and joining the Treehouse yes. Pod. We've been wanting to get you here for a while, man. Thank oh, really? you. Yeah. Why? Why? Eight, eight's been eight's <laughs> been like you guys gotta get Sir Joey in. I'm like for sure, bro. That's a that's a done deal. When yeah. he's free, let's do it. But yeah, man. Before anything, how's it been for you recently, dude? How's everything been since like the last time we saw each other? Really was Armalite days, like hanging yeah. pretty much. Yeah. How? What's been new, man? What what what's been keeping you busy the past um couple of past year maybe? Uh, the past year was um, well, of course, it was the return from COVID, yeah. and whatever. But the funny thing is, um, you know, you you get to a certain age where you tell yourself, uh, "I'm not gonna do the fucking music thing again." Yeah, or, you know, I don't want to play guitar. I don't want to be in a fucking band or whatever. And then, surprise, surprise! After the the COVID, these guys called me, sila uh, sing, sila chi, and whatever. Yeah. So now, um, I mean, I'm not playing now, but you know, it's back to the band lifestyle again and whatever. So. You're managing, sorry, you're managing them, right? You're managing. I'm booking them and booking, representing booking, booking, them. Booking, yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's management, uh, you know, it's it's a different thing. Eh? It's mm. a different beast altogether. Gotcha. So other than like, uh, because like I remember you helped Armalite out back when we were when yeah. we were starting. You were a manager, yeah. And it was fun because like I uh, that was the time like I got to know you. But then we never really got to hang because when we'd be each other, it'd be like a professional. Like you, you had to do your thing in the back. But yeah, I, I know and I've heard from Eight and from Gab and from a lot of people that you've been in the you've been in the scene, man. You've been you've been around, yeah. Right. And like when did you start off playing music as a like as a musician, or did you start off doing the behind the like managing and maybe booking oh. bands? Uh, mm -hmm. I well, I started playing for uh, Sky Church needed a guitar player mm -hmm. at that time, so I started with Sky Church, and then it just so happened that I was also looking for a job because you know, as most musicians, didn't really do the school thing that well, so uh, I took up journalism. Oh, uh, nice. Couldn't even graduate that. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I took up journalism, and then I, I started playing for Sky Church, and then Russ had a big hand in submitting my resume to Vernon. Uh, the, the boss from Pulp and he was like oh this guy writes uh, I think Vernon was at a Sky Church gig it was this really loud guy at the back and whatever <laughs> he, was, he was digging the music so I was like yeah I could write for you because uh, as everyone knows death metal doesn't really pay yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like I gotta it get a fucking job <laughs> <It doesn't>, no <laughs> yeah so yeah that, that that's how it all started so it was almost like at the same time yeah. Um, and then you know when you're young you have the nerve uh, you know you write especially back then mm -hmm. I mean the internet wasn't in full swing so you could talk shit all you want you wouldn't get cancelled too easily if we yeah, saying yeah. anything online back then but yeah as a young kid I was like yeah this album sucks this band sucks yeah. so, like, what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> no because I like, like I've heard from, from friends also because I, I personally I guess because of the the age gap or maybe just not being in the same scene or the yeah. same category at least with the um, Sina 8 back then I'd hear that you were when you do write your articles or when you do maybe review bands is that yeah. something like, you'd always be the most straightforward no nonsense like you yeah, say yeah. it as it was yeah did you ever get like backlash for that because like there I mean oh, I got a ton right? of backlash for that shit I mean <laughs> like death threats uh, <laughs> I did get one but what? it was from some piece of shit I mean <laughs> like nobody could really do anything or whatever was this band worth it <laughs> not really <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it it was it was it was hard back then because even though the internet wasn't there, um, you know, th th there's this thing that I, I'm not I'm not sure a lot of people will get it, but there was this thing that oh you had to belong to a certain faction of bands, which I totally hated. Yeah, uh, um, I'll probably get crucified for it still, but I hate it when it's more about the groups mm -hmm. than it is about actually playing. Okay. So uh, that was always I always had a beef with with shit like that like oh you belong to this group of musicians you play this kind of music or whatever, so uh, I, I felt that you know as a fan because before you you had to buy CDs you had to buy music and I was like, I mean you know some young kid because I was that kid I was yeah. that kid I, I I'd save my money and I'd buy CDs from bands and whatever, 
And then when you pop it in, it was like, oh, holy shit, this fucking sucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, give me my money back. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't just stream it like how you do yeah, now and get a glimpse of, the of, of a track. Yeah, yeah, but but then again, on the flip side of that, if you really discovered like a really amazing album, you yeah. know I mean, you know, it was life changing. Yeah, yeah, there was so, something about about records too back then because like yeah. growing up, I remember yeah the whole Radio City Tower Records in Shang back in the day. But then like even when my mom would like travel back back. Like years, years back, I would really for bands I really like, like you know the 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 circus survives, the use and all that. I'd yeah. really get the physical copies down because there's just something about listening to an album, you know. And I, I don't think a lot of people do that nowadays, you know. No, there's like a disconnection for the music yeah. with this generation now because they don't have that. Like it's when all we were Spotify kids, now. We'd go YouTube. to our friend's house, be like check their CD collection, and then yeah. instantly, yeah. you know, have a something in common now it's like there's just so much variety no one knows what what they like anymore because it's just hidden in their spotify yeah, it's playlist, like it's like know? an overload of information yeah. or whatever but yeah talking about the backlash yeah, i did get a few angry emails for sure uh um, would there be anything you could share on camera <laughs> like if you i don't mind i mean head, those like... guys know who they are fuck those guys i mean uh, <laughs> I love so Joey, dude. <laughs> but yeah like I, I you get the email that oh you're you're off or or always oh, we, we worked hard on that and get your ears checked <laughs> yeah and, uh, you know shit like that and of course the fans i mean which is good um i honestly think the you know uh, most of the hate mail i got was from the fans of wow. those bands well, at least they had fans yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. their moms i i remember <laughs> um where's the Again. who gave me the most grief uh, <laughs> who gave me the most grief <laughs> no oh i i i was uh what was that band fuck i can't remember uh, but yeah, they were, you know, the, the passionate fans, they were like, uh, oh, you can't, you can't talk about our, our idols, our heroes in that way. They, they work really hard. And I was like, I mean, dude, cheers. I mean, if you like it, it's good. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just writing. Yeah. Uh, I, I just figured before I was like, yeah, I'm just, you know, the, it's, it's a job I do and I didn't like it. I mean, yeah, it, because, you know, my pet peeve is, you know, when you, when you run into that one idiot. Yeah, and you say, "Oh, what music do you listen to?" And the the standard answer is, "Oh, I like everything." <laughs> <laughs> that fucking pushes me off the cliff. And I was like, "Really? Do you really like, like everything, everything? <laughs> you fucking piece of shit?" <laughs> name me two country songs <laughs> yeah, next to two hip hop songs. Name me right three now. Harley <laughs> Davidson songs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean that shit pushes me off the cliff. That like, I mean, I, I look, um, you know, you, you have your favorite song, you have your favorite yeah. band, and and you know, you fight for it, and yeah. and and you don't take shit from people who say otherwise but to say that you like everything yeah that, that's sort of a stretch yeah <laughs> it's too it's too broad uh, yeah too i big mean an answer i mean you can't like slayer and then fucking k-pop right yeah. it, does, it <laughs> makes no sense <laughs> you gotta have standards you may like something and appreciate the other but then yeah the, the for same, sure yeah, yeah. what's that like. called again the uh, guilty pleasure yeah like guilty <laughs> pleasure, yeah guilt, you know? i get guilty pleasure i totally get yeah but, like a one two miley cyrus on that playlist other than yeah, like that, your slayers yeah. and your peripheries exactly and all that. yeah yeah interesting but so so nowadays um since you mentioned you've done that are you still doing that now like is um, that about back back to what you're doing currently uh, yeah also? well i started writing again um for for pulp but it's just mainly like uh, i just want to help bands out uh, yeah. get them out there a lot of people have been requesting for like reviews and whatever yeah. and i was like are you sure <laughs> are you sure you want me to <laughs> be <laughs> honest <laughs> uh, i mean the same guy who's asking for my review probably would like hate me in like two months or whatever after i write <laughs> I about it should have asked for that review <laughs> yeah. that i was here to help <laughs> yeah yeah dude so yeah, it's 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 that it's writing and then uh, Chelsea Chelsea Ali's really busy so yeah um, awesome the, the, yeah it, it's it's stuff I mean I don't really get to play guitar or whatever but um, I think I have to pretty soon so yeah but I'm sure you still play at home like you still have your your no your, I no? stopped for five months like oh, wow. I, I haven't played like I play guitar when I get drunk with these guys yeah <laughs> uh, but um, I haven't seriously played guitar but I think I, I have to play soon because uh, there's a gig coming up in in, in outside the country so oh nice a bunch of buddies uh, also a metal band they were like oh we need a guitar player we'll fly you out and whatever sick. so oh, sick, so man. I was like okay <laughs> <laughs> I'll, pr- I'll get on, I'll get on the on, on the All guitar right. soon. Look, so um, that's this year you mentioned. Uh, that's the, happening this June. Wow, yeah, yeah, so. I'm excited for you, dude. Yeah. Stoke, stoke. Terrified. <laughs> <laughs> the butterflies are kicking in slowly. Yeah, the realization that it's actually happening. Super terrified. 
So in in line with that, dude, um, has it changed for you? Because you mentioned you played for Sky Church, right? And yeah. Like yeah. this is just started to geek out and then segue into like gear and then guitar playing, right? Oh yeah. Um, has how was your during the pandemic? Did a lot a lot of my musician friends rather that some of them maybe just didn't touch their guitar for the whole duration, or some yeah. that's all they did, right? Um, but with you, given you did have your other priorities, you had maybe your you know um, Chelsea helping Chelsea out or your work. Yeah. When you play a guitar now, is it still the same? Like, do you still play the same like type of genre or type of riffs? Oh, you no, no, not really. Yeah. Like uh, again, like the most guitar I played like recently was whenever I'd hang out with uh, with with buddies, and then you know we're all drinking. And you, you know, you play your, uh, you know, I mean, might as well embrace my age. You know, you play your Ario speed wagons, you play your yeah. glam rock and whatever. But like seriously, like the metal stuff or or, or the heavy stuff. Not really. Um, we were doing the online jams during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Then we would play like Alice in Chains. Hell yeah. Or uh, a grunge stuff that we grew up listening to. But I mean, I was even playing like pop stuff or whatever. Like, yeah. Name a few tracks. Pa like we played pop song. Uh, <laughs> my favorite pop song. Yeah. Dude, that's how long's your show, man. <laughs> um, at the moment, like my top five favorite pop songs would probably be something from Gary V. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Um you know Gary Vee's like uh, uh, that kind of dude um, I was listening to uh, the other day I was listening to who was I listening to it was really this this artist called Me Meja Meha our uh, local local artist uh, uh, some international artist okay uh, I'm, I'm all, whenever I'm here at the flying house you know when I'm drinking with Ader Gab mm -hmm. it's 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 80 stuff John Waite bad English <laughs> it is that genre I mean is yeah. that the generation of discussion so yeah the massa stuff man massa. I mean, regular <laughs> stuff <laughs> you but you also played with Gab right I mean or was am I wrong yeah, yeah. you played with his um his, his solo pra prayers prayers, prayers yeah, yes yeah. sorry Gab I, sh I remember that <laughs> but yeah it was me Gab uh, Karel, Karel and uh, C Otep a uh, really good guitar player so uh, no, yeah, so not a Gary V fan so yeah, no, he, he <laughs> like, what the fuck is this guy talking about no but yeah so, um, <laughs> so with that thing with Gab because like I'd see that at home man like I, there, I, I remember countless of times I'm walking to my room or getting water and then he's just video calling with you and, yeah. and Karel and I'm like oh so Joe I'm in my boxers hey man it's been a while <laughs> but like are you guys still doing that now or is it no, no? Um, it was well Gab's busy with Urban Dub uh, obviously yeah. that's really his main band uh, yeah. but, but at the time he put out that uh, solo record um, a new strain and uh, I just it was funny because I just ran into him at a mall uh, yeah he was going down the escalator I was going up the escalator <laughs> it was like hey hey uh, want to play guitar and I was like yeah yeah <laughs> I was like all right <laughs> text me text me the schedule and and then yeah and then when I when I got there Karel was there Otep was there like really good musicians yeah so I was like, yeah, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we've always had that weird... Um We've always had that weird. I have like really weird friends. <laughs> yeah. uh, like uh, you know, I hang out with a lot of people. Like most people don't think I hang out with. So, yeah. So yeah, it's it's always cool to do that. That's always the fun. Those are always the fun barcadas, to be honest. Like, yeah, you learn. Just you not, learn so much. Yeah. If I hung out with metalheads, then fucking <laughs> fucking get nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Jo Josie, do you oh. have anything to say? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Metalheads, all right. How do you feel about uh, the new, uh, well, not the new, but the Pantera reunion? The reunion, yeah. yeah. It, it's so polarizing, right? Um, I like it. I mean, I mean, look, the guy's dead. Dimebag's dead. Vinny's dead. I mean, unless technology finds a way to... Hologram them yeah, back on stage. Like but, but, you know, the, the Zach's a great player. Yeah. Um, uh, drummer, he, he's really good. Um, so yeah, uh, Charlie Benante. Um, I like it, but um, I sort of agree to a point mm -hmm. that that we, you know, with other diehard fans were like, don't call it Pantera. I guess to some small extent, I, I agree that maybe you should call it something else, like uh, I don't know, Pantera Part Two or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. Something different. Something, something different, different. Yeah, just kind of like rubs me wrong that it's like they did it after Vinny died because Vinny wouldn't have done it yeah so it just yeah. feels like they didn't have the full you know uh, exactly like approval the blessing yeah, or exactly. whatever exactly it's like ugh. but you know uh, you know I had so many thoughts like going through my head like stuff like that but as soon as I watched it on YouTube and whatever I was like wow these guys are still pretty good yeah dude <laughs> like it, it's hard to deny that you know it, like if they came our way 
like uh, here in Manila, I'd probably buy a ticket I'm, for I'm sure. Hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> I'm actually surprised that Phil can, you know, like keep up. Like, yeah, because he wasn't in the greatest shape before. Right? Yeah, because like, like, I've seen some old down and super joint rituals when he was looking rough, but now he's looking good. He's looking good. Yeah, I'm still waiting for the Nazi salute though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll do that here in the Philippines. Yeah, I, I, I hope he does. Yeah, <laughs> but do you think that's a possibility for Pantera to come play a show here? Like at at this current, I think um, they just did Japan. My my background is weird because because I was born in another. I was born in the states, mm -hmm. grew up in Japan, and then I moved to the Philippines. Oh wow! So and we were living on military bases, so he only had one radio station. Oh, snap. so like my primary influence is whenever people, you know, that stupid question they ask you during interviews: <laughs> What are your primary influences <laughs> yeah. or whatever? Uh, I Yo was mama. all about Michael Jackson, dude. Oh, um, wow. Whoa. It was Michael Jack. Whatever that was on the radio. La Bamba was on the radio when I was young. And uh, a lot of pop. The pop. Jets, Boys to Men. Uh, Ooh, Boys you know, to Men. Yeah, Classic. I mean, so that's what I grew up on. And I was listening to Chicago, Peter Cetera, and whatever. So during that age, I just never really tried to play an instrument. Because, you know, those songs are fucking hard. I mean, uh, the key changes and whatever. Yeah. So. But then when I moved back here in the Philippines, that's when it all started. I was listening to um, a lot of LA 105. It was an old radio station. Mm -hmm. They were playing like local uh, local bands, three chord bands and whatever. Uh, so that's where it started. Uh, my metal journey started when, when Russell called me up from Sky Church. Yeah, oh, he was wow, the guy who fed stuff. me the stuff. It was pretty late. Yeah. And the funny thing was I didn't even have an electric guitar. I was living in some... Uh, I was living in Malabon where, you know, there's nothing but water. I mean, it's yeah. just floods and whatever. So I learned all those songs on acoustic. And my very first gig was the first time I held an electric guitar. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. I had never had an electric guitar or whatever. So I was figuring out stuff on acoustic guitar and, and, you know, Russell would teach me this stuff. And they were feeding me so much. They were feeding me the Slayers. They were feeding me Cannibal Corpse. Uh, because at the time I was listening to the Smashing Pumpkins, I thought the Smashing Pumpkins was the greatest band in the yeah. world. And <laughs> you and Gavis uh, had the same. Band yeah, ever had, man. <laughs> we we're all about the Smashing Pumpkins and stuff. So that's how it happened. That explains your. I was listening to you Noodle on the guitar a while ago on the acoustic, and yeah. I was like, oh, you wouldn't expect that to be like from Sky Church. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. That was that's my go-to E minor song, Zero Man. <laughs> e <minor. laughs> that's, that was that's super brought smooth. Me back that was the sound check, <laughs> E minor. <lab>. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, um, I just had another question in line with that. Um, would you describe like the the process, right? Like you mentioned Russell and coming into Sky Church, right? And yeah. then mind blown as I am now, stomped to hear that your first electric guitar experience was yeah. in a gig, man. Yeah. Since then, um, being you do other things like with Pulp, right? And yeah. and Pulp, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, primarily they do they. So sort of at, at some point or at least from my memory they really focus on the heavier bands yeah. is that correct they yeah. didn't really have a lot of um the pop mass of filipino bands in that did that sort of like create a bias in you in any way like doing that for oh, so long not really yeah. again like um i always joke with my buddies like if boys to men and slayer had a concert on the same day i'd probably go to the boys to men really? concert <laughs> as much as yeah. <laughs> Uh, front, front and center, sir. Joey. Yeah, dude. I mean, center. I'm all about those guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Well, when Pulp started, I mean, it wasn't a thing that record companies were signing local independent bands. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really a heavy metal magazine. Like uh, I remember the first few issues, you had bands like Itchy Worms there, bands like mm. Twisted Halo. Uh, but the thing is, though, I mean, like those bands got signed. Yeah, and 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 they got big. Uh, so what happened was we were always like talking about, yeah, we got to look for the, you know, you got to look out for the small guy. Yeah. I mean, that's always been my thing. Like, um, like as much as I was just at, at a lucky, I had the lucky ap opportunity to watch these bands grow mm -hmm. and get really big. But then as soon as those bands were big, you always got to look for the next guy. I yeah. mean, it wasn't a business thing. It wasn't a marketing thing at all. I was just like, cause you know, again, you're reminded when you're young, all you want is to hear your song on the radio. All yeah. you want is to see your face in a magazine. Or yeah. right now, you just want to see it on a website. You want people to listen to you. So that was always my thing. But And it so happened at the time, you know, like heavy music was just really exploding everywhere. Like, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I remember when when 
Queso Hounds and Slapshot. They were the new guys. Yeah. When I was starting in Pulp, the, they weren't the big. The, they weren't the giants that they are now. Yeah. So we were always looking for those bands. Let's look for the small guy and and support him. Hopefully, and help them come yeah. up. Yeah. It, it sounds corny. It sounds so hippie when I talk about it, but it's actually what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, because I remember my first like um sort of when I first learned about pulp. You know, because like coming in the scene, also like meeting everyone one by one slowly, and I learned about pulp. Like, yeah, exactly. It was the three I would see. It was Sap Castle Hounds. And I was just like, oh, like I've I've heard of these guys. I've seen them on TV. Maybe I've heard a couple of songs on the radio. And I was like, oh, they're all heavy, man. Like they they they're heavy. So I always had this bias where I thought pulp was just like always all about that. And then when we met, and then like I found out that you've been doing that for a while. It's just something I've always wanted to ask. Like I wonder how that sort of also affected you. That's why I asked that question. It was weird. It was hard. Like like and like a it's, it was almost like a band mm-hmm. uh, because when I started out, like uh, I remember. Um, I got an advanced copy of the Moonstar 88 album, the first one. And I just thought it sounded great. Yeah. I was like, these are great songs. Yeah. And of course, I was just this young kid. And mm-hmm. then, you know, I, ha- I had my editors and whatever. And they, were, and they were like, you're giving way too much credit to these bands. Because when I started out, my, my, my reviews were like high. So it was yeah. Radioactive Sago Project. It was mm-hmm. Kamikaze and whatever. Yeah. And, you know, all everyone who was there, I mean, not to... Not to put them on the spot but they were like oh you're, you're just a fanboy you know the, but why why give four oranges to 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 moonstar 88 and whatever so yeah so it was also hard you had to prove yourself i was like no they have great songs they have yeah uh the songs sound great i mean it's not hard it's not metal or whatever but you know you got to give credit where it's due yeah so it was hard it was a lot of proving myself that way and uh which is why i think me and gab are so close mm because uh the first time they went to manila it's a funny story i'm sure Vern forgot all about it but <laughs> um we we had to come up with a cover for pulp and we were drawing blanks and i was like you know you should really check out this new band from cebu and and we should really put them on the cover i think they'll hit it big yeah and Vernon was like bullshit <laughs> he was like no, it's a yeah, band from Cebu it's ridiculous <laughs> I mean, you got his voice on point dude I met Vernon a couple of times it's yeah, exactly how he speaks <laughs> and uh, it was funny it was a fun thing though because Vernon was like are you willing to bet your paycheck on it and my paycheck was nothing yeah I mean dude so I is mean, it worth the risk the like and, really back so, on that and I was like yeah, yeah I, I bet my paycheck I was like put those guys on the cover they're gonna be really big yeah and uh, and and I was like but if I'm right what do I get and Vernon, <laughs> right. I was and I was like, "I'll give you my paycheck, which is really Whoa. big." <laughs> oh, he probably regrets yeah. it. <laughs> so yeah, they hit it big after we did the the Urban Dub cover. They hit yeah. it really big. Hey, Vernon, <laughs> and I never got that paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> Vernon, if you're watching, <laughs> Sir Joey, <laughs> he'll probably say he doesn't remember. Or whatever. <laughs> I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, man, that's 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 a that's a good thing, and I'm loving how Pulp recently has been coming up with a lot of shows again like i've just been seeing yeah. um like i just saw their silverstein announcement um and they just had another what was their most recent uh show silverstein again? mayday parade, mayday uh, parade they're coming, doing yeah. the cores yeah uh, and they do all the big k-pop shows as well so yeah so it's a, it, it, it really transformed into this big like production i mean it's no longer just about articles or whatever so. yeah so no that's great man like well actually that's that's what i wanted to f- uh, sort of dive into further um in in regards to shows man because like they being you're in 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 a, in a company or work for a company that does that like i wanted to ask more on like how it the process is really to get a band to come here and like the the difference like for like, the difference with the band like seosin maybe or like a uh, 1975 or boys to men right like how how is there a difference in that process to, to sort of get bands to come for here pop it show? was it was a super like we didn't know anything about yeah. international shows again we were a magazine yeah uh and then we just took a chance it started off like with really small shows like mm-hmm. we we brought in this all-female band uh jaggedy ann like a uh, really really good all female but they were just doing like covers of classic rock songs and whatever so it started with that and then the following year vernon had this idea oh let's bring in death angel because he was a he was friends with uh the original guitar player gus yeah. peppa so they br- we brought in death angel and then you know it was it was great because you know when we did that show uh i'm pretty sure vernon was just trying to wing it how to do with the whole thing they played the SummerSlam, and then when they went back to the states they were just telling all their buddies 
in the Bay Area about us, I guess, that, hey, you know, we, we can play in the Philippines, we can play in Manila. Yeah. And then it just got bigger and bigger. I mean, before we knew it, like, <clears throat> Lamb of God was playing here. I was there. Yeah, <laughs> Lamb of God. And uh, hell yeah, I got to meet Vinnie Paul, who's oh, a big man. hero. And uh, we were just doing it. The, the same guys that were writing the, the articles for Pulp, we just learned how to stage manage. We just learned. It was it was a very grassroots. Uh, and then it, he, he, he just kept doing it. And uh, one of the big <coughs> first shows that we did was um, the Se the Cove Se era Ocean. of Seoshin. Yeah, the, the A-Venue. The A-Venue. The A- I don't know if I get everything right, uh, but um, you can always ask for it. But from what I remember, there, there was this one guy. Um, he wanted to put up that big festival. Uh, double band setup and you just wanted like 50 plus <laughs> bands and whatever so that was the first summer slam in Pasig there it was a guy uh, who he, he basically funded it wow. but Vernon came up with all the creative the, like the, the name the, yeah. the summer slam and stuff so that's how it started um, and then the second year uh, Pulp just decided to do it uh, for you know uh, as a Pulp production and whatever yeah. So we learned the kinks. Um, there came a time, I, it was ridiculous. Um, I think there was one SummerSlam we had like a three band setup. So Really? Which one? Uh, like that, early, early on SummerSlam? Like early, it was, it was uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was maybe SummerSlam 5. Maybe. Uh, that was the, the time when Death Angel first played. Mm-hmm. And the reason for the three band setup is we put together the three bands, Queso, Slapshot Counts. Yeah. And they just played. I think that was um, one of the first summer slam I actually watched the Kesso slap the, the the three. That was a double band setup for the first oh, summer okay. slam, yeah. But but the triple band it just got crazier and crazier. We just kept adding more bands and Which whatever. Which one was the Lamb of God? Lamb of God, I think that was maybe Summer Slam I don't know, Summer Slam eight. Yeah, my my, so. my my memory shot. <laughs> that was that was my first summer slam and I remember I uh yeah, that was my first summer slam. I was yeah, yeah because like I, I love like there's there's a there's I guess a bit of bias for me that I love SummerSlam because given the bands I grew up listening to, it was just really pulp that was bringing them in, you know. Exactly. Like maybe you'd have a you have a couple of other productions that would bring in maybe one or two bands I'm really interested in. But with SummerSlam moving on to like Bazooka Rocks and everything, like yeah. the, the views, the Seo Sins, the Census Fails. Um, the Taking Back Sundays. Yes, the Taking Back the... Sundays, man. And like, you know, to me it was really like wow, like I love pop for doing this. So, like, I, I've always wondered, given like just even with your brief um, history earlier about Vernon being like metal, right? Like, how yeah. was that transition, or were you a part of that when it sort of came to right, guys? So we we do want the Metallicas, we do want the Panteras, maybe, but moving on to like let's say the, the newer hardcore emo oh, Finch, yeah. you know, were yeah. you part of that? Man? Well, um, of course, <coughs> the credit still goes to Vernon because yeah. he's the guy who really took the chance on yeah. it. But, you know, he'd always ask us, the staff, like, what are you listening to now? I remember it was, um, I, I still remember that day. I, I, was, I think I was listening to Pantera, maybe, or maybe Slayer. And then the record company sent me like three CDs. It was uh, Glassjaw, Ooh, Glass Taking Jaw. Back Sunday, and Thursday. And, you know, I've never heard of these bands, whatever. Yeah. But it was, like, really new. And they send it over. And I was like, why do I like this? <laughs> I was like, I'm not supposed to like this shit, but I like it. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it was it was a great office setup because Vernon, you know, he'd come in. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he'd just sit beside me at my desk. He was like, what are you listening to? What's that shit? What's that crap? And whatever. <laughs> What's that crap? So, we, you know, it, it was a fair, it was 50-50, you know. We, we, we make fun of certain music but then we'd also like discover new music yeah um it was funny because I, I think he went on vacation and then he came back and he just grabbed cds based on the album covers oh wow and and uh, he showed me the atreyu cd Ooh, uh, was that the atreyu's the the one with that vampire whatever yes. album crimson, cover the crimson and it was like do you like is this good and i was like uh, fuck i know and i was like put it in and, and you know we listened to it i was like oh it sounds good yeah and so you know he was very open to evolving the. Com- I I think that's Vernon's biggest uh, gift. You know he, he has that forward uh, yeah. thinking kind so it's of. It's a non tunnel vision one. He yeah. has that broad the perspective. Because on you things. know when we did Super Junior, that was our first. And, you yeah, know, I, you guys did Super Junior. Dude, that's I right. fucking hate that band. <laughs> Fuck those guys. Yeah, you uh, did Super Junior. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck those guys. I mean, but. You know, he he knew it. He knew it was gonna be big. Yeah. Um. And, and you know, it, it took a lot of work. And and you know, you, you know, you're used to dealing with international artists. I mean, just give him Red Horse and give him 
you know, just give them something to smoke and, yeah, and they're good. They're good. But this was like super big. This this was different. This was like this is pop or whatever. So, so what did they need? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they want uh, what did they want? I think soju. They, wa- they wanted soju and vegetables <laughs> or some shit. <laughs> and I was like, really? I was like, so but yeah, that, that laid the foundation. When they did that show, I mean now Open they're doing doors. all these big K pop yeah, yeah. shows and what they're doing the cores now. I mean can you believe it? They're the cores, like the the the, the, the cores, dude. Cores those light. Irish people, yeah. <laughs> the um, violin, violin, the yeah, yeah. So they're doing that now, and and you know it's sold out. That show's yeah. not happening until October, and it's wow. sold out already. So That's insane, man. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was, it was a very grassroots learning process. It wasn't. Uh, we didn't really have like the formal know-how or whatever. We yeah. were just figuring it out, and I was doing the same thing, like figuring out, you know, like. We're doing small scale stuff like Intolerant was playing Hong Kong and we were yeah. learning what booking was and um, we didn't have an idea. Like in my mind, I was like, how much do I charge? Uh, can we give them a tech writer? Can we yeah. give them whatever? So we figured it out on the fly pretty much. Interesting. And, and like, I like how you said that because I was just thinking about it. And um, yeah, sorry if I held your question, Joey, uh, jo- Josie, but like tech writers you mentioned you've 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 been around with pulp with with all these bands regardless if it's summer sam of their own show but what would be the craziest tech writer you've ever seen that was requested man um by an international act you sorry, know what yeah. for for metal it's all pretty easy mm, uh, okay. it's pretty easy like i don't really see the tech writers myself the contracts go straight to vernon yeah but like uh from my experience like um it's just amazing like for tech writers it's crazy in a different way yeah because you know you're into all these heavy metal bands and you think they're drinking all the time and whatever but there's a lot of vegetarian food happening oh Uh, these guys are like really healthy because again touring you know when you're a kid you think they're just pounding beers away and whatever but they're actually really heavy yeah uh really healthy and uh dying back (laughs) yeah they want access to gyms uh oh wow uh, they want to work out when megadeth came here oh yeah they they have their own tuning room right so they were rehearsing they were just like on top of their game and whatever and uh, you'd be surprised at the number of uh like really healthy heavy metal musicians for crazy like uh again super junior like i guess you guys can tell i really fucking hate that (laughs) that can we go back to sky church for a second i I was just thinking about um so you had an you're an acoustic guitar player. They're a metal band. Like, let's get this guy. Give him his guitar on stage. <laughs> like, I just can't really. Like, how how do they find you? Like, oh uh, well, uh, we attended the same university. Uh, where we're UST. Me and Russell uh, were batchmates. Uh, we were batchmates in UST. And um, I just met him through a common friend. I had a band back then, but we were doing the bar thing. We were just playing covers of smashing pumpkins or whatever and uh, we you know we were just having fun yeah we were basically playing for drinks and whatever and then uh i got to hang out with russell and then russell was like you know what uh because before my 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 idea of a great guitar player was like a guy who played like really fast leads or whatever um like but, steve vai virtuoso yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, their eldest brother uh si Romel, um uh, he was becoming a doctor already and Russell was like oh we have a gig next week want to try and uh, play for us and whatever I was like yeah but I don't have an electric guitar and it was like yeah just figure out the songs he gave me a CD of the song and it was funny because most of the time I faked it um, he gave me a CD went home to Bulacan uh, and then nalaglag sa baha yung CD so I didn't really listen to it uh, <laughs> and then uh, the night before it was a big NU 107 independent stage show like a big show before and Russ was like, "I'll oh, just come to the house and just uh, just learn the songs and whatever." So, uh, I, I maybe about sixty percent I figured out on that acoustic. And then the night before the show, we just like woodshed like crazy. And then the next day, the show. You must have been show. nervous. I was super nervous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really had no knowledge. Like, um, it was funny because when we were setting up, Russ set up the guitar and Wait, uh, here you go. the settings <laughs> and whatever, and he just gave me the guitar. I was like, "Yeah, there you go." <laughs> so I owe those guys a lot. I mean, th- that's where I learned everything. So and moving forward from that though, did they like give you a guitar, an electric guitar, or you no, just, no? So you I, just practiced just, on your acoustic at home, and yeah. then here we go again. Here's and I just game. saved up all my money or whatever. There was no Ellen DeGeneres moment where <laughs> oh, here, have a guitar, and then you know you cry and whatever. <laughs> no, there wasn't a moment like that. <laughs> what was your first guitar, electric guitar that you said you just mentioned? You saved yeah. up. Yeah. What was your first? It was baby? An, uh, again. I was really into like paul gilbert and whatever mm. so i got an ibanez Ooh, okay. i thought it was like the greatest thing ever it had a it had a like floyd rose and whatever which i've come to really hate oh yeah um but yeah that was my first guitar it was it was that ibanez i still have it um 
was RG is an RG. It was an RG. RG yeah, indeed. Yeah. It yes. was it was the prototype of the Prestige <clears throat> because the Prestige hadn't come out yet, mm -hmm. and that was the Prestige. And then they they fucked it up. Like the the price point was way too low, so I was like, I just snatched it up. You know? Yeah. So it was basically a Prestige that didn't have the logo and whatever. So like a blemish, like a blem. Yeah, blem it was just like phenomenon. Ibanez. It was yeah. just an RG and whatever. Interesting. Uh, can we talk about your gear? Uh, are you still with ESP? I have no gear, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no I play gear. direct, dude. Uh, uh, well, I do have like a noise suppressor and whatever. Um, but yeah, years later, uh, I, I got that endorsement with ESP and LTD, uh, which sort of didn't work out. So, oh, so you're not with them anymore now? No, I haven't been. I, I think that ended... That was pretty quick. That, that was just like a two or three year run or whatever. Oh, okay. Uh, but it was really cool because, um, you know, I got to... I got to share that experience with eight because they also yeah, got eight. Yeah. And, were you guys uh, were at the same time, correct? Yeah, like, yeah, at the same time. That. So me and eight were geeking out about ES. Yeah. And you know, when you're a heavy metal player, you just want to play ESP, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, eight, there's a time he was like, "Mark, you got to check out the Phoenix or you got to check out the Eclipse." You yeah, know, cause that, yeah. that was the, those were the the, the models or the, the type of body styles that you know he associated his yeah. his love for the for the company, man. Dude, those those guitars are great. Uh, yeah, too bad didn't work out. It was the local distributor who fucked it up. Yeah, them, so. <laughs> so like in in, in just uh, moving back a bit from jo um from Josie's question man like when you did get your guitar how was the how was the practice um how was it how was it practicing guitar for you man like how was it that process for you it was really hard because again like I didn't own an electric guitar yeah. and I didn't know that you needed an amp for mm -hmm. an electric guitar <laughs> <laughs> I thought my Junior problems was. were solved and whatever yeah. so again like like um uh, like being perfectly honest I screwed up a lot of gigs yeah. like I screwed up you know it's the best teacher. Uh, when you fuck up, yeah, it's the best true. teacher. Like you know, you feel like shit. I'm nothing. I'm zero. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Self loathing. Like. But again, <laughs> I, I was lucky because uh, the, the the Sky Church brothers they, they mm -hmm. had a studio at home, so we didn't have to worry about like studio time and whatever. Yeah. So we just woodshed like crazy, and um, and, and you know, it was it was a it was a really eye opening experience yeah. that. You know, because when you're a kid, you think all you got to do is play guitar. Yeah. You just got to go on stage and play guitar. Yeah. But I didn't know there were so many other factors. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, the, the tone. Yeah. Uh, you know, the geek bullshit like that. Yeah. I, I still hate talking about it or whatever. Tones in the fingers, bro. Yeah. <laughs> then, and when you go on those sites, like, uh, remember years ago, fucking film music. And yeah. You know, the, where there's always that one guy who knows sites. more than yeah, you and dude. whatever. Oh, you got to get this. I was a part of that, that forum site, man. I'd love seeing yeah, those dude. threads, bro. I, I love seeing people fight over, like, <laughs> Get gauges and picks and whatever I was like you guys are fucking stupid <laughs> <laughs> you gotta use an 11 gauge bro yeah. what yeah. gauge do you use yeah. I feel you use uh, I just use 10s 10, um, yeah I feel yeah. you because uh, you're an acoustic player so I yeah. feel and you know we never detuned or anything we just always played in standard or whatever because um, you know back then yeah the technology wasn't great all tuners were just tuned to standard so yeah. it all changed when we you know when Intolerant came out yeah we just tuned a half step down so wasn't that big of a so, yeah it wasn't a big change too. yeah because because you know I hate I hate using I don't like bringing gear yeah <laughs> one one guitar plug yeah. and play you all know? you need is a guitar you just need a chord and yeah. most amps you know you just you know I mean. Dude, Black Sabbath, right? I mean, fuck, those dudes just... There wasn't even a gain knob invented back then. They just, like, fucking cranked it. Yeah. Whatever. So I was like, yeah, you know, less less things to worry, worry about. about. That's why a lot more. of people think I'm, like, a hater of guys who use, like, effects or whatever. Yeah. I don't hate it. I just laugh at it. Yeah. I mean... Just not your cup of tea. It's not for you, but... Yeah, then dude, I mean, you got three fucking it, yeah. boards, but your song still sucks. I mean, what the <laughs> fuck? I mean... <laughs> Throw it away. There, there's Looks the option, good though. You're making up for the songs. <laughs> yeah, with, dude, uh, with I, mean, the gear. <laughs> I don't need three delays. Yeah, uh, I don't need. Th I'm sure some people do. Yeah. Do I people mean, have three delays? I, I've I've seen many musicians like yeah. three delays, three dirt boxes, three choruses, and the song still <laughs> fucking sucks. <laughs> but they're going home with chicks. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. So. But but you know technology is better now. Yeah, I mean, dude, insane. Like multi man. effects, insane. And, yeah, just I'm, the I'm, plugins alone. We I'm have learning nowadays. the error of my ways. I yeah, mean, <laughs> you know, talking to those guys at Guitar Pusher and whatever. Yeah, like they really explain it. They break it down really good. So even I can understand it now. Yeah. I was like, plus you know the reality of touring now and whatever. I mean, there's still not a lot of great venues with great gear. Mm -hmm. So you know it does serve a purpose. I do get it. Yeah. I just like making fun of it. Yeah, I like pissing people off, <laughs> <laughs> trolling in a way. I'm sure there are a lot of 
VFX collectors out there is gonna really yeah. hate the show. <laughs> they're, they're gonna be like, "What did Sir?" But Jones? yeah, fuck you guys too. <laughs> so we should have a Joey rig rundown, be like a five minute video no, for sure. Man. <laughs> That'd be like thirty seconds, dude. Like, here's I have my, my pick. Here's my cable. There's my guitar, dude. That's per- that's perfect. You said that because that's the best leeway, uh, segue rather into asking. So, what would be your advice to the up and coming kids now, man? It's a, such a cliche oh. question, but like, given how you just started, man, and like everything you just said and how you approached learning the guitar what do you think your best advice would be for the oh, younger ones now god damn that's the miss universe question right? yeah dude that, I, saved that, that question. I saved that i saved that for the latter of this pod <laughs> i saved the miss universe first of all pray <laughs> uh, uh, Amen. thank god <laughs> no me and me and gab used to joke all the time about you know questions like that yeah you know, dude. The stupid interview questions <laughs> But you know, um, <laughs> and the joke was always, "Oh, you want to get into a band? Don't do it. <laughs> don't um, run." But you Listen know what? To your parents. The best advice I I ever got um, comes from you know musician friends too. Yeah, right. uh, I remember the the the. I always have like the, the trifecta of advice I got. First advice I got was from Francis Brew mm-hmm. uh, of the Dawn. He was like, "You know, you can't get a good distorted sound if your clean sound sucks." So the I just lived by that. If it sounds good, clean. It'll sound good, distorted. And then uh, I think next was eight. We were in Hong Kong. They were they were playing the World Battle of the Bands, mm-hmm. and eight was like, you know what you should do? You just put everything on twelve o'clock. Yeah, everything so flat. Like, yeah, so that's just right. flat. And I was like, oh, that's pretty good advice. Yeah. So I still follow that advice up to now. You know, just do the little tweaks. And then Gab like had really really good advice too. He was just like, stay in your lane, which is what I sort of live by now I, yeah. I remember we were hanging out we were we were drinking or whatever it was like just stay in your lane that's the best advice and what do you mean by that and, though uh, um basically like you know if you're a musician and it also pisses me off like uh, when when i run into musicians that oh let's write this song because it have this really big hook yeah and you know it's also it sounds like whatever electronic bullshit that people are listening to right now <laughs> yeah. love it but uh basically it just means that you know you just write whatever you want to write yeah i'm pretty sure like uh, all the big bands you can name now they didn't get big trying to write a yeah. hit or whatever they yeah. just did what they they do. just did what they did and yeah. they, it, you know it worked and and that's why people relate to it but you know every now and then you interview that one band oh we're writing the song and we want it to sound like fucking whatever this band yeah. or and i was like yeah dude that's fucking horrible <laughs> no no i agree there, that's there is the worst that trend, way to do it actually man like like nowadays okay. in in terms like we were talking about well you mentioned earlier off cam that you you don't really listen to bring me the horizon right and yeah, like Leanne yeah. and i were saying that they're they're one of the dopest bands now and like they they did sort of do their genre hop from like Definitely. deathcore to like now they're a bit poppy but they did it their way like the you you I, can tell you I, know? I really do appreciate like <clears throat> groundbreaking artists like that yeah. but it's the fucking fans yeah the, not yeah. the fans but the followers Exactly. Like yeah. when Corn came out, you had like twenty other bands sounding like Corn, and yeah, I was like, yeah, "Dude, yeah. like, I'm not gonna listen to you. I'll just listen to fucking Corn." Exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. And when Metallica came out, all these thrash metal. Bands. So it's the trends. I'm sort of. I mean, never follow a trend, dude. Yeah. I mean, no, that's exactly so that's, that's what's my leeway to that. Because f- stay in your stay lane. In your lane. Like, find your own sound. Yeah. yeah. And you know, to a point, it was also because you know how how it gets with music. You know, there are all these people talking. That oh you should do this you should do that or or there, there's politics yeah you know there are some musicians who blame politics in the yeah. scene and I was like dude like you don't really notice this stuff if you're busy writing music yeah so if you have time to meddle in politics and whatever then, then you're, you're probably not, not fucking doing your job exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's great that's actually right? very well said man although i'm guilty of that too yeah. like every now and then i go on a rant on facebook yeah. <laughs> when, when i read something like totally ignorant or whatever yeah. I, I i have my moments too <laughs> <laughs> no i've, I've seen, i think i've seen like a couple of sir joey rants on, on facebook back then dude yeah <laughs> even lately like yeah. I've, I've been ranting like they, they were making fun of that kid uh the, the e-rock i mean no, not the e-rock the no that the kid who was who was rocking out and whatever yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 that was the band. They were making fun of that band. And I was like, I mean, dude, I mean, uh, he's doing his thing. I mean, I probably props to him, yeah, man. Like, yeah, keep, keep. I probably it. wouldn't listen to his band though. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, what's the point? Why, yeah. why are you making fun of that kid? I mean, focus on your focus on yeah. your stuff, you know. And you know, everyone who made fun of that kid, they didn't have fucking albums. They didn't yeah. have fucking like no. But the thing is, whatever. you know, it's like it's like a Justin Bieber moment. Where it's like everybody's hating, but they're talking about him, and yeah. it helps them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we all know who it is. Yeah, exactly. They're the the closet. They're, they're, they're I don't know. I'd always just account that to like jealousy or maybe like 
you know like i don't make fun of it i don't hate it but i enjoy the memes yeah that's always fun <laughs> memes are always fun but it's just like i saw one where that's I mean, dude, you good. know if you want to make fun of shit that's totally fine yeah but uh but i think what i got upset about was you know they they put the kids video there his face was there they yeah. were using and you know you, you got to draw the line yeah, somewhere right? line, yeah. i mean yeah. and you know you can't hate on bieber i mean yeah, yeah. Dude, awesome. I'm a, I'm a awesome, huge, dude. Uh, dude, I'm a huge Justin <laughs> but Bieber But before fan. that was that on like 2012, that was like the topic of discussion. No, I hate Justin Bieber. Yeah. And then everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. Right on, yeah. <laughs> hating, hating Justin Bieber's cool, man. Like, that's that's, that's and then And then eight years later, he's the shit. Yeah. He he got so mature. He, he grew said sorry. Up. <laughs> yeah. He grew up. No, but yeah, man. Uh, just just uh, ending ending the show on a lighter note, dude. Like, is there anything before closing this out that you have going on that you would like people to know, or is there anything you any bands you'd like people to look out for, given you're back into sort of seeing these these up and coming um, bands again? Yeah, well, well, Chelsea Alley's really busy right yeah. now. Of course. Yeah. Um, Shout out to our Matt, our boy Leanne. He's, yeah. in the, he's in the studio, everybody. <laughs> They're really busy right now. They're working really hard. Yeah. And um, so far, I haven't pissed them off too much. <laughs> so. uh, ah. But yeah, they're, you know, I, I always, people think it's a bias, but there's mm-hmm. always like these really great, like uh, heavy bands. I, I, I always mention and, and, and promote them because there really is no avenue for those kinds of bands. Yeah. So that's the only reason why I keep mentioning those bands. And, you know, you know I'm really stoked that. All my favorite bands are still out there doing, doing their, their thing, thing. Yeah. like like Urban Dub, like with Urban Dub, like you know we we get drunk here and yeah. you know I I get to see them whatever. But every time I watch them, they're like just like really good. So good. So you yeah. you, you know you just got to keep supporting. Yeah. You know it sounds so cliche. It actually yeah. makes me want to throw up. It's but, a cringe. It's a cringe. But, statement. Yeah, <laughs> but you really got to support these guys. Yeah, these yeah, guys are working really hard, yeah. and and you know there's always that one kid in his bedroom who's you know he's the that's why it's so funny to me like everybody's talking so technical now and yeah like, oh the, the the algorithms or whatever yeah. or or they got these views and i was like no dude you're not gonna find the next big I don't yeah. know, the, the next big guy is somewhere in his bedroom like just jamming out playing he's crappy just, songs yeah. how to tune guitars and whatever so you always got to look out for those guys and yeah. whatever so hopefully uh things will get better now Yes, hopefully in this day and age, because like you know, being can- getting canceled now so easy online and like yeah, yeah, just yeah. just bands like there's some artists that I'm sure are just even scared to release anything because of that. Yeah, yeah right. It, it's two sides. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's a lot of crap out there, really. Like, there's just total shit yeah. out there. Uh, but there's also really good stuff. You just gotta look for it. Yeah. Uh, Make the time really to also look yeah, into like it. Yeah, like really make the time. You know, pay pay the entrance. Yes, yeah, so support know, in any way. Pay the f- pay the ticket. Yeah, I mean, pay for the ticket. I mean, before it was really cool. Like you know, uh, I'm sure most of our yeah. early experiences, you know, just got in backstage, got yeah. to hang out with the band. But now, like more than ever, like these artists yeah. really need it. So yeah. yeah. Well, that's a that's actually a great way to close the show out, man. And yeah. Like I really wish everyone tuning in really heard and listened to that. Uh, Pays their ticket. That that's that's <laughs> my takeaway too, man. Stay in your lane. That's 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 yeah. actually very great advice. So with that, Sergio, we would like to thank you, man, so much for Thanks, for joining, man. dude. We're, we have to close this out tonight. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Thank you and so much. hopefully, we get to have you back on another episode, man. Yeah, talk man. about other shit. Maybe some other bands that come up that you end up hating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. <laughs> I'll be more prepared next time. I'll, <laughs> no. I'll We'll have a flow chart and whatever. Dude, yeah, we'll have everything set up. <laughs> but no, thank you, man. Really, um, thank you for the time tonight, everybody. Let's give Sir Joey a round of applause before having we go south, everybody. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs> Stay in touch, everybody. The Treehouse Podcast will be coming in with you soon with more episodes. Cheers, everybody. Good night. Hey, what's up? My name is Josie. His name is Frankie, and my name is Marts. Thank you for tuning in. If you like what you see, please do follow us on our socials for more updates.